Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will learn how to carry out a hypothesis test for a single mean, one sample t test, construct a confidence interval for a single mean, one sample t interval, and compare the results of the test and the confidence interval. Georgiana claims that in a small city renowned for its music school, the average child takes at least five years of piano lessons. We have a random sample of 20 children from the city with a mean of 4.6 years of piano lessons and a standard deviation of 2.2 years. A. Evaluate Georgiana's claim using a hypothesis test. So first we must determine which test to use because we have a random sample and we're dealing with means as opposed to proportions. Uh, we'll have a one sample t-test. So we should do a one sample t-test we want to set up our hypotheses, the null and alternate hypothesis. The alternate claim is what you need evidence for. You need evidence to prove this. So we need evidence to try to disprove Georgiana's claim. Our alternate hypothesis is going to say Georgiana's wrong. The average is not at least five years. The null hypothesis is just going to say what's believed, what's always been believed is still true. The alternate hypothesis requires evidence. So our alternate hypothesis here is going to be that the average is not at least five years. Not at least means less than. So the alternate claim is that mu is less than five. The true average number of years of piano taken in this city. The null claim implicitly is that it's at least, meaning greater than or equal to, but we always write our null claim as an equals. So the null claim is that mu equals 5. We'll set our alpha to 0.05, our significance level. And now, very important, we have to verify the conditions are met. The conditions for our one sample t-test are we need one random sample, and we need a sample size of at least 30, or the population is normal. Here we do have a random sample, and since n is 20, which is less than 30, we don't have the data to be able to graph the data and kind of assess the distribution of the data, so we're just going to have to assume that the distribution of the population is approximately normal. So we'll just assume that so that we can continue with the problem, but we should note that we're making that assumption. And now we're ready to find our t-statistic. T is always the observed or the estimate minus the null over the standard error. In this case, that's going to be the observed value of 4.6 years minus the null, which is given by the null hypothesis, so minus the 5. And then the standard error here looks like S over square root of N. So we have our S, sample standard deviation of 2.2 that we plug in here, divided by square root of 20. We're going to need the degrees of freedom, and that's uh, n minus 1 for a one sample t-test. So in this case, it's going to be 19 degrees of freedom. We can evaluate this, or we can use a shortcut on the calculator. And so let's pull up a calculator. And for this one, we can go to stat, over to test. And the one sample t-test corresponds to just t-test. So that's number two on a ti. That's t-test. We don't have all the data, so we'll have to go over and choose stats and hit enter. And now it asks us to enter mu sub zero. That's this value here, five. So we'll enter that. The x bar is 4.6. S, the sample standard deviation is 2.2. N is 20. And our alternate hypothesis is a less than. So we'll choose the less than sign and then calculate. And we get our t statistic and our p value. So we'll record those two numbers. We have here t um, is negative 0.813 and our p value is 0.213. Now this p value is bigger than alpha. And so we do not reject h sub o. If we do not reject H sub O, we do not have evidence for the alternate hypothesis. So to put it in context, we do not have evidence that Georgiana's claim is incorrect. We do not have evidence that the true average is less than five years. We do not have evidence for H sub A. B, construct a 95% confidence interval for the number of years students in this city take piano lessons and interpret it in the context of the data. 
So we have, again, one sample, and we're dealing with a mean, so we're going to have a one sample t interval. And conditions uh, for the one sample t interval are the same as for the test. So we have a random sample. And again, we'll have to assume that the distribution of the population is approximately normal because our sample size is too small and we don't have the data to investigate it. When making a confidence interval, it always has this general structure, your estimate, plus or minus the critical value times the standard error. Here, our estimate is x bar, the sample average. Critical value is t star, and the standard error is s over the square root of n. So if we plug in those numbers here, our 4.6 for x bar, we plug in our sample standard deviation and our n. We know the degrees of freedom, again, is n minus 1, that's 19. So now we can find t star. Um, to find t star, we're going to have to use a t table. So let's pull up a t table. We want df is 19, so go to row 19, and we have 95% confidence, so go to column that says 95. And where those two meet, that's 2.093. So we can fill that in for our t star. And now we can evaluate this manually, or we can grab a calculator. And uh, let's see, if we grab a calculator, we can go to stat, tests, and this one is going to be t interval. So number eight is t interval. And again, we have stats. Because we just ran the test, our data is conveniently already entered. So that's great. If not, then you can just enter your x bar, your s, and your n. Make sure you choose the correct confidence level, in this case 95, and let's go to calculate. This will give us our interval. So we have our left endpoint and our right endpoint, and we can record those values here. So from 3.57 to 5.63. So now we can say we're 95% confident that the true average years of piano lessons in the city is between 3.57 and 5.63 years. Now. For our final conclusion, what do we think about Georgiana's claim? Well, she said it was five or more. There are values of five or more in this interval. So those are reasonable values. So we don't have enough evidence to reject that claim. So because this interval contains five, as well as values slightly higher than five, we do not have sufficient evidence that the true average years of piano lessons in this city is less than five hours. It might be less than five, it might be five, it might be slightly more than five. All of those are reasonable values based on this interval. Part C, do the results from the hypothesis test and the confidence interval agree? Explain your reasoning. So to summarize our results, we had uh, for the test, we did not reject the value of five. So we did not have evidence that it was less than five. And for the confidence interval, we had five was in our interval. It was a reasonable value, so it makes sense that that's why it was not rejected. So again, for the confidence interval, we do not have evidence that it's less than five. So yes, as expected, the hypothesis test and the confidence interval are consistent. They do come to the same conclusion, not evidence that the true average is less than five. Five is a reasonable value. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.